Hi, welcome to Rocky Biochem series. In today's video, we will be discussing cDNA library. Please, if this is your first time of watching our video, kindly subscribe for more important video of some key topics in biochemistry and then molecular biology. This video is just a continuation of our previous video on DNA library. In that video, the focus was on GDNA library and here we will focus on cDNA library. Consider a DNA molecule. For this DNA molecule, a segment of a gene in this molecule will undergo transcription to produce an mRNA and then after producing the mRNA, it later on undergoes translation to produce an amino acid and then gene expression is said to have taken place. So if you want to reverse the whole process, that is if you want to reverse our mRNA back to DNA, then the type of DNA that we are going to form is called a cDNA and then the process is called reverse transcription. So we can therefore define a cDNA as a DNA molecule, that is a double-stranded DNA molecule synthesized from a single-stranded RNA template. Now let's look at cDNA library. So cDNA library is a collection of clones which consists of cDNA synthesized from the mRNA obtained from the cells in which the gene of interest was expressing. To make this look so simple, let's consider this scenario. Let's assume that we've come across a person whose eye is pink in color and then we are interested in studying the gene that coded for this pink eye. What we have to do is that we have to extract mRNA from the cells of the eye and then after extracting the mRNA from the cells of the eye, then the mRNA is going to be used as a template for synthesizing a cDNA molecule. And then after obtaining the cDNA molecule, it is then going to be inserted into an appropriate vector to form a clone. So after obtaining the clone, it is then transformed into a host cell like bacteria and then the library is said to have been constructed. So the advantage of cDNA library over gDNA library is that cDNA library is made up of only the coding regions of the genome. From our previous video, we got to know that gDNA library is constructed by using the entire genome of the organism for the library construction. But here, we are only using the mRNA to produce the cDNA for the cDNA to be used in the library construction. From our knowledge in transcription, we got to know that mRNA, that is matured mRNA, is produced after some processes like splicing, capping, and tailing have taken place. So through a process like splicing, the non-coding regions called the introns are going to be removed from the sequence and hence the final mRNA product obtained is only made up of the coding regions called exons. So if we are to use this mRNA as our template for producing the cDNA which will later on be used for the library construction then it means that the final library that we will have will consist of only coding regions of the genome since mRNA is made up of only coding regions. Let's take note that other classes of RNA like the ribosomal RNA the transfer RNA, the SNRNA, and then the miRNA are not used for cDNA library construction. To make this look so simple, there are two main classes of RNA 
we have the functional RNA and then the non-functional RNA. So, for the functional RNA, they are the final products of the RNA itself. These classes of RNA, they are the final products of the RNA itself. A typical example is transfer RNA. The RNA, that is the tRNA, is the final form of this class of RNA and it performs its own function during translation. But when we pick mRNA, it falls under a class of RNA called the non-functional RNA. So for these classes of RNA, they themselves are not the final product and they are going to be used to produce an additional final product. So this makes M M mRNA as the only class of RNA that is suitable for constructing cDNA library. Now let's look at the steps involved in cDNA library construction. The first thing to do is to carry out mRNA isolation and then purification. So in purifying our mRNA, a column is packed with oligo DT molecule. So it is like an affinity column that is a column for carrying out affinity chromatography and then our ligand that is going to be packed in this particular column is going to be oligo dt molecule so after packing the column with oligo dt molecules the mr mrna is then passed through such a column and then after passing it through the column the oligo dt molecules that are packed in the column are going to hybridize with the poly a tail of the mrna so after this hybridization has taken place the next thing to do is to increase the concentration of salts in the column to bring about elution of the mrna from the column so after eluting the mrna from the column the next thing to do is to incubate the mRNA strand with an enzyme called reverse transcriptase for the enzyme to use this mRNA strand as a template for the synthesis of the cDNA strand. So the enzyme called reverse transcriptase works like DNA polymerase. It requires a template and then at the same time it requires a primer before it can carry out chain synthesis. The enzyme itself cannot initiate chain synthesis. It requires a primer. So the oligo DT molecule is going to serve as our primer for the synthesis of the cDNA strand. So after obtaining the mRNA cDNA hybrid, the next thing to do is to carry out hydrolysis of the mRNA strand by treating the hybrid with an enzyme called ribonuclease H or treating the whole hybrid with an alkali to bring about degradation of the mRNA strand. So after degrading the mRNA strand, we are going to be left with only a single-stranded cDNA strand due to the hydrophobicity of the single-stranded cDNA the three prime end undergoes formation of a helping loop. So the cDNA strand obtained is then incubated together with DNA polymerase 1 and then the DNA polymerase 1 will use the single stranded cDNA as a template for synthesizing a double stranded cDNA. So, after obtaining the double-stranded cDNA, the next thing to do is to trim the loop at the end of the double strand by using an enzyme called S1 nucleus. So, as we can see from this double strand, the end, I mean the three prime end, is forming a double, is forming um, a helping loop. So, this helping loop needs to be trimmed and then the enzyme that we are going to use is called the S1 nucleus. So after the trimming, the next thing to do is to attach a linker with restriction site onto the ends of the double strand to ensure 
the to ensure that the double strand will be able to be incorporated into a vector without a restriction site a double stranded dna cannot be incorporated into a vector that is why it is appropriate to attach a linker to the ends of the double strand so the enzyme that we are going to use to attach the linkers with restriction sites to the ends of the dna is called the terminal transferase after attaching the linkers to the ends of the double stranded dna the next thing to do is to insert the cdna into an appropriate vector to form a clone and then after forming the clones the next thing to do is to transform these clones into a bacteria host for it to undergo replication to produce multiple copies and then with the production of multiple copies the gene of interest can then be screened and then located so there are several ways of screening the gene of interest we can use hybrid hybridization by using a dna probe or by using immunological methods like the ELISA, the chemiluminescence assay, and then etc. And then in this modern day, we use PCR amplification as a means of screening for our gene of interest. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe.